No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I hope that wasn't like a you were. I hope you were kidding. <laughs> okay. How are you, man? Pretty dang good. Welcome to the local pickup. Uh, we today are going to show you a, an amazing, beautiful, wonderful guitar. An old guitar. An old guitar. This is a 1930 wow. Martin guitar. Uh, a, a 217 is what it is. And actually, this guitar is called a number 25, which is a, a very oh. rare guitar. Yeah. So. And, and I'll kind of give you the whole story, but um, so, so the, the Martin started making the 217 in 1922, I believe, early 20s. And they made it, it was the first guitar they made with steel strings. They'd been using, you know, gut strings, mm -hmm. uh, acoustic style strings. Because the gut of what was the gut? The gut of an animal. Or, no, it meant that the, they were hollow. They were gutted. They were. Well, now you know it's not from the gut because I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. That's they what gutted it some be. guy. They started making steel string guitars to be louder. Like, so, you know, when they made lap steel kind of Hawaiian guitars after World War One, like mm -hmm. the, the kind of guitars you played oh, like yeah. that, those were made with steel strings. And so they had to uh, make this stronger because steel strings pull really mm -hmm. hard on the, on the bridge here and can pull the face of the guitar. Yeah, that little yeah. anthill. Yeah, exactly. for a lot of old guitars. So, Martin, uh, a lot of people were taking out the adjustable kind of bridge and things in these old lap guitars and making them where they could play them like a regular six string, mm -hmm. which normally had, you know, gut strings or, uh, you know, classical kind of strings. So, so, the 217 was the first guitar that Martin made with steel strings. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, th they made them all through the 20s. They were their best-selling guitar. They're small, they're easy to carry around. So was it like a parlor guitar thing? Well, so it... here's the thing. So like nowadays people call them parlor guitars. Back mm -hmm. then, this is this is actually a little bit small, but but this is just the, the size guitars it's were. It's just a guitar. Yeah. yeah, it was just a guitar. And um, People were tiny. People were tiny. And seriously, have you ever been like the Biltmore State? Yeah. Nashville? Like everything's what? tiny. Can you like, talk about the that? Bed tiny, so the bedrooms are tiny. The small and rooms tiny. Are tiny. Yeah, it's really weird. I the bowling alley's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if I had a time yeah. machine, I would dominate. Yeah, you'd be like, I would you just guys be are like, tiny. Oh, you're tiny. <laughs> Look at your little um, guitar. So they made these 217s with steel strings in the 20s, and then, uh, and they had the binding uh, on the Top, right around the sides, right, and around the back here. And then uh, they, they were $25 when they first made them. And, wow. Yeah. Uh, and over time, which was the least expensive Martin, but it wasn't completely cheap. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Well, by the time it was 1929, they'd gotten up to $32.50. <laughs> Seriously. Scandalous. I know. It, which was a lot of money. Think about yeah, proportionally, right, like percentage-wise, $25 up to $32. That's a yeah, big difference. That's true, yeah. Especially, um, yeah. So when the depression hit, when the markets crashed in 29, Martin decided to, they wanted to get back to the $25 price point out of general principle mm -hmm. for like doing something for the country. So they dropped the binding and they made the 217 without the binding and dropped the price to back to $25 and they wow. called it the number 25. And for two years, 1930, 1931, 25 bucks. they made um, 217s and called them number 25. Wow. 
Yeah. That's crazy. That's like that's how much it costs to get a burrito now. Yeah, right, seriously. <laughs> and and so then they um everybody still called it a two seventeen. I mean, this number twenty five was just a Martin thing. I mean everybody still called it a two seventeen, that's what it was. So then they just started calling it a 217 again, and they just never put the binding back. So this was this is an all mahogany guitar. There's no appointments. There's a Martin uh, stamp on the back of the headstock here. There's a stamp inside. It's Martin's attempt to uh, respond to the depression, to make an all mahogany, easy to carry guitar. And this became the, I mean from a folk social cultural standpoint, mm -hmm. this is what made the guitar be the primary instrument. Uh, because Jimmy Rogers, the like the the kind of yodeling country, he was the mm -hmm. first country star ever. Jimmy Rogers was the first country star. Um, considered the father of country music. Played these because they were the Well you can admit that Luke Bryan is, you know, well better. yeah. I mean not that you can compare them really. But um But we can say that. Yeah. But uh sense. You know, it, country music came from Jimmy Rogers and from this guitar, you know, singing about trains and imagine being at the, um, you know, the homeless camps of the Great Depression or the Dust Bowl or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is the guitar that everybody would have had. The cheapest Martin guitar, all mahogany, um, just a beautiful guitar. It's, this guitar is all original, except um, we've got uh, tuners on it that aren't original, but we have the original tuners. But these fit right into the holes and um, you know original tuners will these old guitars they'll break or crack mm -hmm. or whatever so so these are perfect but it has a beautiful sound why don't you uh, play it for us a little bit here it also has too to be such a tiny guitar yeah that was the first thing we talked about when we play this in here with all these other guitars it's just like you can hear it immediately when you pick up another acoustic guitar for this it's as old as it is as small as it is it just screams at oh it does yeah, it's, in a good it's way. louder than any any acoustic that we have here in in the uh, studio today I mean it's really loud and the strings are spaced really far apart kind of like some of the guitars we've worked with, you know, like a Santa Cruz or people making high-end right, boutique yeah. guitars now for yeah. ergonomic reasons, yeah. they're spacing the strings. That apart. was a big learning experience for me when we went to the Santa Cruz uh, office um, in the, on the West Coast. Was That was introduced to the idea that, like, sh strings being further apart isn't a negative thing. Right, Like, yeah. it gives you, because, I mean, your hand is definitely, it's not as if your hand doesn't fit across the strings. It's just like, it's this sort of maybe modern idea of like small, close together, close right, to yeah. the action is small, it's easier, quote unquote. Um, that isn't, that's sort of uh, not necessarily a given when it comes to the way the strings are laid out and the width of the neck. It actually it feels very natural. Um, yeah. I don't feel like I'm reaching or whatever to get to any of the strings or whatever. And the guitar has, you know, souls in it. I mean, this guitar has an incredible history. I mean, this guitar was made, I contacted the folks at, uh, at Martin, um, Jason Honor, uh, if I'm mispronouncing uh, your last name, Jason, I apologize because we've just communicated by email, but he's over the um, archives and museum at, at, uh, at Martin. And he, he gave me information about this guitar. This guitar was uh, like specific information, like mm -hmm. March 24th, 1930 is when construction began. And then like April 22nd mm -hmm. or something is when this guitar yeah, was completed, really cool. which is incredible. And uh, he told me about the whole uh, number 25 thing and how mm -hmm. this is one of the few guitars that were kind of designated with that, with that 
definition was really it's just a 217. Again, they just took off the binding mm. to make it cheaper to drop it back down to 25 bucks. And um, but this guitar has a unique history. So I, I worked with this guy in Richmond, Virginia, old fellow that sold it to me, and he told me about the history of this guitar. Um, he wasn't a collector really; he just had come across it. But um, so apparently in 1930, and this is a sad story, so excuse me, but in 1930, a man bought this guitar for his son, and then he was on the bank of the river in Virginia and watched his wife and his son drown from the bank out in the river. And he had not given this guitar yet to his son. It was his son's birthday. And he put it in a closet. And it stayed in that closet till like 1983. Wow. When this guy in Richmond that I talked to got a hold of it. They took it out, decided to sell it for family estate sale or whatever it was. And the guy bought it and he had it hung up and then it fell off of, they like got it off of, you know, a wall hanger and dropped it and it hit the pin and it cracked all the way up the mm. side of the guitar. Yeah, see that. Yeah. I mean, all the way up, man. It does two cracks, but then the second one stops here, and then the, the first one goes all the way up. And it was repaired pretty well, uh, and with new new taping and binding and glue and um, going all on the inside. And it, I mean, the guitar plays amazingly well. It's loud. It's um, it does have not perfect action. And most people would, you know, reset the neck, but the neck has never been reset. Wow! In its entire history, That's it's crazy. never been in reset. Almost a hundred years. Yeah. But I don't. It's. It may not be flawless. I didn't feel that when I played it. I don't. Right. It doesn't feel like it's warped. No, me. it doesn't feel like it's. Uh, some of these guitars are just like, oh, that's an old guitar, hard to play. I mean, yeah. You can I mean, play I've yeah, beautiful I've picked music up on this acoustic guitar. guitars from the 1980s that are just like yeah. it's, the neck is like yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't this notice is, um, that at all. I just mean the difference between like perfect action. Yeah. And old guitar action. I mean, it's still a beautiful instrument to play. And so I'm kind of back and forth. I'm probably not going to reset the neck just because it's never been separated from the guitar. Yeah. And, and I almost just don't want to be the one who does it. But um, but I just, I mean, the guitar just has like overtones about it and mm. soul in it. I'll play a little bit here. Of, I hope it translates in the mic. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's just I feel like there's you know sadness in this guitar. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a certain amount. Of, I mean, I mean, you know, you have this specific anecdotal kind of like truth about what's actually going on with this guitar, which is incredible. Which yeah, is, yeah, very sad. But um, I mean, I think that sort of richness would come across, you know, in this guitar, even if you don't know yeah. that. And I mean, sure. it, you know, it's it is the quintessential. Great Depression guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's the cheapest guitar Martin made. They made it as cheap as they could to accommodate the fact that everybody was broke. It's easy to travel with. And it's just, it's what, you know, country music was born on, was mm -hmm. born on this guitar. Um, and uh, kind of the, just the, the white folks' depression and music and stuff. I mean, you know, the kind of the black folk community at the time, you had the, more bluesy guitar, some of the Gibsons and the Kalamazoo's and things that we'll get into on other episodes. But as far as the the imagery that we see of the Great Depression mm -hmm. that we're so used to seeing, like the Dust Bowl yeah. and the white folks in like camps and yeah. with tents and stuff, this is the yeah. guitar of that era. Yeah, that transition from folk music to yeah. country. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, you know, it went from um, people were transitioning out of the banjo which was the banjo was the most popular stringed instrument or the folk music instrument because it was loud. Mm -hmm. And guitars mm -hmm. were like a European instrument that had, you know, strings that were quiet, bodies that were quiet. You couldn't hear it. 
So think about everybody hanging out around a campfire. Yeah. And it's loud and people are yelling and stuff. You couldn't hear a guitar, but you could hear a banjo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's interesting. And it does make sense that the guitar would come in to kind of replace that because I love the sound of a banjo, but it isn't as complete of a... It's not like, complete. Like yeah. the way yeah, the way a piano is, you're all right. done there, there's every note you Banjo is like a complimental instrument. You know, exactly, yeah, so yeah. A guitar is definitely closer to being one of the... Kind guitar of is kind of yeah. like the piano. It's the closest exactly. instrument to the True, piano. Yeah, yeah and, and when they made it out of steel strings and made it where it could project, all of a sudden it was like, that mm -hmm. is the instrument. And you got some low end. Sing over it. Yeah, you yeah, got Banjos aren't bass. really known for their low end. Yeah. And these Martins especially have low bass. Even for these tiny little guitars, they have good bass, you know. It just sounds great, man. Yeah, it really is a remarkably full sound for something that just looks like, you know, the side of a ukulele in terms of the I know, size. Of it. yeah. It's tiny. Yeah. It really is tiny. And like, uh, you got a stamp uh, on the back brace in there, Martin guitars, you got a stamp on the back. It's actually stamped into the wood. But other than that, I mean, it is, and, and these fancy looking tuners are, again, not original. The original ones are black buttons, they're little ebony buttons. They're super simple. And it's just, um, the simplest guitar you could make, you know, and Martin, well, I can't make any. Well, I, well, that's true. That not that you could make, but uh, but it really is a testament to, uh, or it's a it's a historical. I mean, this is like a museum item, you know. Yeah, it yeah, no, and it exudes that. You know, I walked in the room and saw it, and it was just like, yeah, you can feel that immediately. Yeah, you want to hold it? Yes, I do. You should. You keep looking at it like you. Like I know. Yeah. Well, it is. It is. I mean, like I said, it's like it's small, but I mean, it's just. You can feel, I mean, I don't know if it's just from seeing the images of the time or whatever, yeah. but I associate this look of a guitar with that, that time and place. Yeah, it's great. So loud, yeah. yeah. Especially mm -hmm. like with a pick, man. I, I'm surprised I don't have a pick. Uh, let me grab one real quick. Uh, I mean, when you strum it with a pick, it's like, yeah, you're like, whoa, that's too. Like, is there a volume knob? <laughs> like, that's loud. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Given the size of this guitar. Yeah. Which obviously, I guess, from that, someone's been. To it. Yeah, I mean, imagine trying to get, you know, get over a campfire with everybody talking and hanging yeah. out and trying to be heard with something you can just walk around with. Yeah, this tiny little thing would give you some power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's a, a piece of history, man. I, I'm just ecstatic for us to have it and yeah, say, yeah, awesome. that's it. That's the one. All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, next time on the local pickup, we'll look at another guitar. Pretty good. Yeah, it sounded really good. Man. <laughs> it was great how you did that thing at the end. <laughs> yeah, that weird thing that you did. <laughs>